Only 50.
test. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 909 this morning. So glad you ventured out this morning on a cold Sunday morning. So we're so glad to have you here. Just also want to welcome uh, Facebookers out there and YouTubers. Uh, we welcome you to the service this morning. And as always, with this service, we cannot do it without the band. So thank you, as always, for doing that. And our technician back there, Gary, and the kitchen crew for the break breakfast this morning. Let's have a hand for them, please. Let's don't waste any time. Let's hear some music. Uh, let's get into uh, Morning Has Broken. Please stand. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Brace for the singing, brace for the morning. Brace for them springing fresh from the world. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven. Like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden. Sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning. Born in the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning. God's recreation of the new day. He got the whole world in his hands. 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 He got the wind and the rain in his hands. He got the wind and the rain in his hands. He got the wind and the rain in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the wee small baby in his hand. He got the wee small baby in his hand. He got the wee small baby in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. He got everybody in his hand. He got everybody in his hand. He got everybody in his hand. He got the whole world 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 in his hand. He got
Good job, Lee. Everybody may be seated, please. At this time, uh, we have prayer slips in the back here. I forgot to mention that earlier. Now's the time to bring your prayer concerns to the cross. Remember, everyday prayers are answered. Do not uh, think that they're not. Uh, each day, God will speak and answer everybody's prayers. So at this time, bring your prayer concerns to the cross at this time while the band plays for us. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning asking for your blessing and, and help as we're gathered here this morning together. We pray for your guidance and ask that you clearly show us how to conduct your work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm throughout the coming week. Help us challenge each other to be the best we can for you. Amen. And now let's do our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's start with some joys. It was a joyful week if you like snow. So if you, if, you, uh, if you like snow, it had to be a joyful week. Any other joys out there for this week? Yeah. Here we go. Go ahead. I didn't think I was getting the microphone. Um, I'm thankful to God uh, that I recovered from COVID with no worries. It was uh, fairly mild and short, and I hope that anyone else who may get it is as fortunate. And I thank you for your prayers and your cards. Thank you. Very good. Any other joys? I'm thankful to be back, and I'm thankful that these folks are so awesome. Yes. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Glad you're back, as always. Any other announcements, perhaps? Oh, I have an announcement, of course. I got a special guest here. I'm joyful that my daughter and her husband, John, are up from Atlanta came in specially for this 909 today, so welcome. All right, birthdays. Got a couple birthdays this week. Terry Potts and Virginia Nix, happy birthday to you. I think we had a special birthday this past week, too, that's not up there. I think this guy right here had a birthday, didn't you? Didn't you have a birthday Friday? Friday? I think this guy had a birthday, so uh, he don't have to sing his birthday to himself. But we're going to sing it to him, okay? And I'm not going to sing, but this guy over here is going to do some singing. So happy birthday. To you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, shucks. Happy birthday, dear Lee. Happy birthday to you. There we go. All right. Very good. Anniversaries. Here we go. January 18th, uh, the Cashins. Happy anniversary to them this coming week. And remember of your, uh, your giving slides, that there's many ways you can give throughout the church. Today you can give if you're here, of course, you can go online, or you can also mail those in to the church at the P.O. box that you see up there. So we appreciate your giving throughout the week. At this time, it is time to give our gifts back to God, and we're so glad to open your hearts as we pass around the plates. Thank you.
Let us pray. Lord, thank you this morning for the gifts of offering that we've just received. Please bless it throughout the week and lead us that we may use it for the benefit of your kingdom. We pray for your direction and guidance. Amen. All right, Lee, let's sing another one. Let's swing it low, please. Y'all please rise. You can all stand up. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and follow, carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and follow, carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Come and follow, carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Come and follow, carry me home. Swing. seated. Today's scripture reading is from Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, thou many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not coexist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not hand, I do not belong to the body, and that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, and that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where it be the hearing be, if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there were many members, yet one body. The eye can not say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor, again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable. We clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. All Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? 
Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. I want to say just a word uh, for those of you who've noticed in your bulletin, if you, if you didn't hear, and maybe you've noticed some things on the slides that don't uh, completely line up with our experience today. We're actually still using what we had planned to use last week. You, you, if you look at your bulletin, your bulletin is from last week. We had them printed, and it just seemed a shame to throw them away, and so we just thought, we'll just use those bulletins. We won't do new bulletins. And this week, of course, has been a strange week anyway as far as scheduling, so... If you see anything that doesn't match perfectly, it may be that, or it may be something else. But at least I'll explain part of the imperfections you might run into this morning. Kevin, thank you for reading that uh, so well this morning. What, what Kevin read to us this morning really is part of a larger section. Uh, Paul is, is teaching about spiritual gifts here uh, to the church at Corinth. And I think, I get the idea, if you read this sort of the larger bit of scripture around this, you get the idea that, that maybe Paul, Paul's letters are occasional in nature, which means that he generally is writing to deal with a, a, a particular problem in the church or something relative to a specific church. So you get the idea when you read this section of 1 Corinthians that there probably were some improper attitudes around spiritual gifts. Perhaps there was a sort of a hierarchy, if you will, of appreciation for spiritual gifts. Maybe some gifts were valued above others. And it seems that that's what Paul is addressing here. And if the gifts are valued above others, some above others, then perhaps some people were valued above others. But it seems like Paul's trying to, trying to make sure that the church doesn't fall into that, to that trap. And earlier in the 12th chapter of uh, this 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul makes it very clear that there are a variety of gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. Whatever gifts there may be, they all come from the same spirit. And so they're, and they're given to individuals, <clears throat> pardon me, for the, for the welfare of all, for the common good. They're given to individuals for the building up of the church as a whole, whether it's a, the gift of wisdom or of knowledge or of faith or of healing or any other God-given gift. It is given, again, to the church for the express purpose of building up the church in the world. In our reading this morning, Paul is is teaching about the value of each gift. And the analogy that he draws is really pretty clear and straightforward. We, we get it, right? He's, he's comparing the spiritual gifts in the church, the individual gifts, to our individual members of the body, right? Our, what makes up our physical body. And it really is, is kind of easy logic. We can follow it. It's really quite simple. Just as we need each member of our bodies working faithfully and working well for the whole body to be whole and healthy, we need each member of the church, right, uh, to be fulfilling uh, his or her mission, every member of the church doing what that member of the church is called and enabled and empowered to do for the, for the good of the whole. Just like every part of the physical body is important, every member of the church is important. We get that, right? That's easy. That's, that's pretty easy logic, and Paul is making sure that we understand that. And, and I think one of the reasons, again, why he is making sure that the Corinthian church understands it is because perhaps everybody doesn't get that. Maybe there are folks within the body of Christ that maybe don't feel as if they are as valuable as others. So I think Paul's teaching to the Corinthian church can be really helpful teaching for us because I, sometimes it's easy for us to compare ourselves with others. Now, sometimes we do that favorably, right? We, we can see ourselves as maybe uh, being more faithful than our neighbor or a better Christian than our neighbor or a better person than our neighbor. If we tend to do that, I would caution you against doing that, uh, overseeing yourself as um, maybe more favorable to your neighbor. If you want to compare yourself to somebody in that regard, may I suggest to you, you compare yourself to Jesus. <laughs> and then you won't have any occasion for boasting or bragging or arrogance. That'll sort of tamp that down really quickly. But the, the, the reverse of that can be true also. You, I, I think part of our humanity is that we can sometimes think that other people are more valuable in the body of Christ. Maybe some people's roles or spiritual gifts are more visible than ours. And I think one of the things Paul really wants to hammer home here 
is the value of each member of the body of Christ, each member that, that is given spiritual gifts for the upbuilding of the whole. And, and so I, I just I want to proclaim this morning based on Paul's teaching, I want to say to the church assembled here and the church assembled at home or wherever you may be this morning, I want to say this and I want you to hear this, you matter. You matter a lot. Without your contribution, without your unique contribution, without you being who God has enabled and empowered you to be, we are not quite what we can be together. Without you fulfilling your call and your mission, without you using your spiritual gifts to the glory of God, we as a whole are diminished, to to use Paul's analogy here. If one part of the body is not working properly, then the whole body is affected. In order for us to be us, we need you to be you (laughs) in the fullness of who God intends you to be. What What you bring to the table is unique. You contribute what only you can contribute. No one can be you. And in God's great design, God has created you in God's image and made you to be fully you, and you are the only person on the planet who has ever been able or will ever be able to pull that off. Nobody can be you but you in the history of the whole wide world. And so I think what Paul is teaching the church is a good word for us in the church to remember. It's really easy for us, and especially with the darkness that that we all deal with in our heads sometimes. You know, in that head space where we think those thoughts that are not healthy for us, right? We all do it at some point or another. We all know what that feels like. But it's really easy for us to fall into the trap of not feeling worthy, not feeling valuable, thinking we just don't measure up to everybody else. And I think Paul's teaching here is good for us to hear because we've all felt it at one point or another. You might be down on yourself this morning. So I just invite you to hear what Paul is trying to say to the Corinthian church And through the Holy Spirit saying to us that each person is valuable. Each person has purpose. Each purpose created by God and in God's image. And just like the folly, did you hear Kevin's reading? Just like the folly of the ear lamenting that it's not an eye. (laughs) There's no value in you lamenting that you are not as gifted as someone else that you perceive to be more gifted. The whole body is stronger when each member lives into the fullness of its created purpose. We need you to be you, and by the grace of God, we need you to be the best you that you can be. It's really pretty simple math. And Paul's letter to the Corinthians also reminds us not only of our value, but of the intrinsic and irreplaceable value of our neighbor. It's important to remember that. Listen again to Paul. The eye cannot say to the head, I have no need of you. The head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of you. What a crazy conversation that would be. It's true in the body of Christ. We all need each other. We all need the gifts that each of us bring. Our neighbor is important, too. One of the important lessons we glean from Paul's message to the church is the value of everyone. It lies at the heart of our individual and shared humanity. And it seems like to me that if we could embrace that, if we could embrace our value and the value of our neighbor, then... Maybe we could help our faith communities, our families, our nation, and our world to become more fully aligned to God's purposes. And Paul makes it very clear, our interconnectedness with Christ. Listen to this. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, I'll rejoice together with it. 
Our nation paused to remember the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this past Monday with uh, his birthday observance. One of my favorite Dr. King quotes was written uh, in his famous letter from the Birmingham jail. It was a response to eight white clergymen who had put an article in the paper questioning his coming to Alabama in the early 60s during the Civil Rights Movement. Listen to this quote. He wrote, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. That sounds to me very consistent with what Paul is trying to say trying to hammer home to the Corinthians, to the church. In Christ, we are all yoked together. We are one in Christ. Not because we agree on everything, not because we vote for the same political candidates, not because we interpret the Bible the same way. We are one not because of who we are, but because of who Christ is. We are one because we have been made one in Christ. It's kingdom math. I like Paul's words in Galatians, 6th chapter, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. Paul's teaching to the Corinthians is a good, <clears throat> pardon me, a good model for the church, reminding us of our mutual, shared, common life. We're calling to our minds the interconnectedness with each other in the body of Christ, reminding us that each of us are of value and reminding us of the value of the other, reminding us of our need for each other. In her book, Living into Community, Christine Pohl writes about how communities of faith flourish when they share stories of God's faithfulness and goodness, when we express gratitude, and when we celebrate the gifts that we have received. Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians, we are to encourage one another and build each other up. In Ephesians, we are taught with all humility and gentleness and patience, bear with one another in love. As we continue our HUMC 2.022 listening sessions, as we try to envision what it means to be a post-pandemic church, the next chapter of our life and ministry together, may God enable and empower us to renew our commitment to be a vibrant community of faith where each member and all gifts are valued and celebrated. May God open our eyes and our hearts and our lives to each other, to new ways of being the church, new ways of sharing and caring and bearing one another's burdens, new ways of welcoming one another, new ways of identifying and encouraging the gifts God has given to us for the upbuilding and the fruitfulness of the church. May the lessons the Apostle Paul taught to the Corinthian congregation through the Holy Spirit illuminate and guide this congregation in this season and in all the seasons to come. It would seem that Paul is addressing a particular problem within the Corinthian church regarding their attitudes around spiritual gifts, comparing perhaps the spiritual gifts within the congregation, maybe viewing some gifts as more valuable than others, which could make some people feel less valued than others. At the close of the 12th chapter, Paul asks, this is what Kevin read to us this morning, and this brought the reading, the Revised Common, uh, the revised common Lectionary reading to an end this morning. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. And that's where the reading ended. There's actually another sentence that the, the, uh, common, the lectionary did not include in today's reading. And the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians concludes with a sentence. The full, complete 31st verse reads like this, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Kind of has its leaning forward at the end. That's why the lectionary chopped off that last part of verse 31. Next week, Lord willing, we'll look at that still more excellent way to which Paul refers. We'll come face to face with that more excellent way in the 13th chapter of 
1 Corinthians. Until then, may the Holy Spirit stir within us a deepening desire to honor God by using the gifts and the grace that He has poured out upon each of us by the Holy Spirit for the upbuilding of the church. The gifts given to us have not been given for us to hoard, but to share and to use them for the good of the whole. So let us share our gifts and let us celebrate the gifts of others. Let us accept that we are valuable and let us celebrate the value of our neighbor. And may we be driven by the desire to be the best version of ourselves, God being our helper, for the benefit of our neighbor, for the benefit and health and vitality of the church, and to the glory of Almighty God. May God enable and empower us so to live this day, this week, and every day for the rest of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as the band leads us in peace in the valley. Thanks to Kevin for his good leadership this morning. Thank you for being here with us this morning in this physical space. Those of you at home, thank you for joining us. Uh, glad that everybody got here safely. Please be careful and safe as you travel back out. Would you receive this word of benediction before we fly away this morning from the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And now, let's fly away.
to the home on God's blessed shore. Really? <laughs> yeah, it seems like 